If you are just getting started with the STM32 or STM32F103C which is also known as Blue Pill. This STM32 Blue Pill module is based on the ARM Cortex-M3 STM32F103C. Although it has this micro USB socket, but you cannot use it to program the STM32 board unless you flash a bootloader. And this is what I'm going to explain in this video. After flashing the bootloader, then you will be able to program the STM32 using a USB cable just like the Arduino Uno, ESP32 and Node MCU, ESP8266 etc. For the demonstration purposes, I started with the LED blinking program. A high signal will turn off the LED while the low signal will turn on the LED. I will add links to all the related softwares and drivers in my article available on electronicclinic.com. You can find links in the description. Without any further delay, let's get started. The components and tools used in this video can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. This video is sponsored by Ultium. Ultium Designer is the world's most trusted PCB design system. Ultium Designer enables engineers to effortlessly connect with every facet of the electronics design process. Over 35 years of innovation and development focused on a truly unified design environment makes it the most widely used PCB design solution. With Ultium Designer, you can create PCB designs with an intuitive and powerful interface that connects you to every aspect of the electronics design process. Route it your way through any angle, tune for delay, push, slide and walk around faster than ever. Interact and collaborate with mechanical designers like never before in a photorealistic 3D design environment. If you want to get started with the Ultium Designer, you can click on the first link in the description. For flashing the STM32 bootloader, we will need this FTDI USB to TTL FT232RL board. Before you start connecting this FTDI board to the STM32, first change the position of this jumper cable. We do it to select 3.3 volts. Next, you will also need to change the position of the jumper cape on the STM32 controller board. Why we need to do this? If you want to know about it, then read my article. Now, let's take a look at the wiring diagram. The ground pin of the FTDI board is connected with the ground pin of the STM32 controller board. VCC of the FTDI board is connected with the 3.3 volt pin of the STM32 controller board. The TX and RX pins of the FTDI USB to TTL converter board are connected with the A10 and A9 pins of the STM32. The serial port number 1 is available on A9 and A10. A9 is the TX pin while A10 is the RX pin. I connected the FTDI USB to TTL board with the STM32 board as per the connections diagram. The jumper capes are set to their correct positions and now we are ready to start working on the computer side. The Arduino IDE does not come with the STM32 package pre-installed. We will need to do it manually. While the Arduino IDE is opened, copy this URL link. Go to the file menu and then to the preferences. If you have other boards manager URLs then simply put a comma and paste the link. If you have not added any links then you can simply paste the link and there is no need to put a comma. When you are done then you can click on the OK button. Next go to the tools menu and then to the board and click on the boards manager.
type STM32. Select the latest version and press the install button. This may take several minutes depending on the speed of your internet connection. As you can see the board has been installed. Now let's go ahead and check if we can find the STM32 board in the Arduino IDE. Great, the STM32 boards are now available. To flash the bootloader you will need to download and install the flash loader demonstrator software. You can find the flash loader demonstrator software download link in the article. The installation process is very simple and there is nothing to explain. The flash loader demonstrator software is successfully installed. Next you will need to download the STM32 Duino boot loader inside this folder along with other files and folders we have this binaries folder inside this folder we have the binary files created for different versions of the STM32 controller boards you can find the download link in the article so we have the binary files and the flash loader demonstrator software is also installed now we are ready to flash the STM32 bootloader Connect the FTDI USB to TTL converter module with the laptop. Open the flash loader demonstrator GUI. If you don't know about the COM port to which the FTDI module is connected then you can go to the device manager and check the COM port. My FTDI module communication port is 9. Now on the flash loader demonstrator you can select COM9 and then finally you can click on the next button. If you can see this green light and the flash size it means we are doing everything correctly. Sometimes it generates an error. Let's go back to demonstrate this. If you see this type of the error message no response from the target then you don't need to be worried now to fix this issue all you need is to go to the STM32 controller board and press the reset button and this will fix everything for you. Now click on the next button. Again click on the next button. Now we will need to select the desired binary file. You can see we have multiple binary files. So how we know which binary file should be flashed? Well this is very simple. Go to the STM32 board and check to which pen the onboard LED is connected. In my case, the onboard LED is connected to PC13. Your onboard LED may be connected to some other pen if you are using a different version of the STM32 board. Anyways, I will select the generic underscore boot 20 underscore PC13 dot bin file. When you are ready, click on the open button. Finally, click on the next button. Download operation finished successfully and now we can click on the close button. This final step is very important before you disconnect the FTDI board. First you will need to change the position of the jumper on the STM32 
otherwise you will lose all the settings and you will have to start the same process again so once the jumper position is changed then you can disconnect the FTDI board and you can remove all the wires because you won't need this FTDI board to upload the code so our STM32 board is ready for its first project I'm going to control the onboard LED and we will use the USB cable to upload the code into the STM32 controller board connect the STM32 controller board with the laptop using a micro USB cable I have this basic LED blinking program before you upload the program first of all make sure you have selected the correct version of the STM32 microcontroller board which is generic STM32 F103C series next check the variant next on the upload method make sure you have selected the STM32 Arduino boot loader CPU speed should be 72 megahertz normal and finally make sure you have selected the correct communication board you can see mine is COM10 Maple Mini if you are not able to see a COM board or if you can see this COM board but you get an error when you upload the program then you will need to install a driver I will add the download link in the article double click on the install drivers this will install the required drivers I have already installed the drivers so I'm going to skip this step click on the upload button and wait for a while amazing now you can see the LED is blinking as I explained earlier a high signal will turn off the LED and a low signal will turn on the LED you can download the STM32 based LED blinking program from my article available on electronicclinic.com I will provide a link in the description so that's all for now support me on patreon for more videos I hope you like today's episode like and share this video with your friends see you in next episode and thanks for watching